Hi, my name is Greg Faulkner. Um, I am from an eastern Kentucky town. That's where I was born and raised, Stanton, Kentucky. I was born into a, a family uh, that was very church-oriented. Orient, my father was a Methodist minister. My mom, of course, was the, the song minister there at the church. At the time of my birth, uh, I had an older brother and two older sisters. Uh, five years after I was born, I had a sister that w was born, so I then had a baby sister. Of course, we grew up in the church. Um, it was church at least Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, and sometimes it was even more so than that. I have no regrets about anything of the way I was raised up. They taught me all of the good moral and ethically correct things. Uh, they instilled in me a love for music, which uh, I still continue to live today. As I stated earlier, uh, I grew up in, in a good Christian home, so I, I have no regrets about my childhood. I have nothing bad to report on it. I was in church, vacation, Bible school. I was a very good student once I entered into school. Of course, uh, my teachers realized at that point that, that I did have a musical ability, and this is something that my parents had learned early on, so I was very involved in music. I was also uh, a very studious uh, pupil. Uh, never had any trouble in school. I always excelled. Uh, got along well with others. Uh, so I graduated from the small eastern Kentucky town and then I went away to school at Moorhead State University wh where that I wanted to become a music teacher. At the time, uh, I did not know that I was an alcoholic just waiting to happen. I didn't touch any alcohol throughout my, my school, but at the age of 22, I did, however, uh, take that first drink. Once I took the first drink, I realized uh, this was something that I loved. It, it gave me a feeling that I had never experienced before, and I just fell in love with it. At the time, I would just uh, drink on the weekends. I, I was working as a music instructor at the time at, at the very same school that I had attended as an elementary student. So I just drank on the weekends, and of course I functioned through the week, did my job well. But as I continued to, dr uh, to drink, uh, the alcoholism that forever had been genetically predisposed in me began to progress. It didn't take long before my weekends uh, become Thursday, then it was a Wednesday, and then it was a Tuesday, and before I knew it, I was drinking every day of the week. At the time, I was only drinking um, after, of course, that I was done with my work day. Didn't take long for that to progress as well, and before long, uh, I had to have a drink even to function and to begin my day. Of course, addiction is cunning, baffling, and powerful. And uh, at that time, I didn't know anything about addiction or alcoholism. I did remember, however, my family doctor telling me at the age of uh, either 16 or 17 that he thought I had a predisposition and, and was genetically already an alcoholic, and he had warned me to not take the first drink. Of course, I, I had drank, and, and by this time, uh, I am an alcoholic. After two years of having my first drink, I believe I was in full-blown alcoholism. Anytime any issue would arise, uh, when I would become overwhelmed, etc., of course you always turn to the bottle because that, by that point that's the way that you learn to deal with things. Um, outside of any issues that I had uh, that I dealt with with alcoholism, as I stated earlier, it become uh, just a ritual. It was a routine. I had to have it as a part of my day. Every morning when I would get up, I would have to have my drink. So where most people would have maybe their coffee or their orange juice, uh, you know, I was having my, my alcohol. It didn't take long. Uh, I was no longer functioning. It got to where uh, I couldn't work. Uh, I'd always been an excellent worker. It always had good reviews. And all of that started to, uh, to slide, and it was kind of like the domino effect. You know, once the dominoes start to fall, they all crash. Um, it wasn't long until I, I was approached by my employer, you know, and I was told, you're going to need to resign or we're going to have to terminate you. At this time, I don't think I still realized exactly what was going on in my life. And, of course, uh, 
in recovery, uh, they tell you that's denial because at that point I still thought that I could stop at any time that I wanted to stop. And I did try and I was unsuccessful. And so it's cunning, baffling, and powerful. And so I didn't know anything to do other than to continue drinking. At that time, I still had a few things in my life. Um, the alcoholism hadn't taken that from me. Uh, before long, all of those things were gone, and I nearly lost everything I had. Not only did I lose the material things that I had in life, but I was robbed of every good and moral thing that had ever been instilled in me by my parents as I was growing up. Gone was all of the trust. Uh, uh, as an addict, we're very manipulating uh, and we like to justify things and uh, we can't come clean with uh, the alcoholism or the addiction that we're struggling with. So I, I was robbed of all of that. You know, no, nobody at that point trusted me. Everybody was very concerned about me. I can remember uh, at one point in my life, very near the end of my alcoholism, when I'd lost everything I had, crying out to God and begging Him to uh, take this addiction from me, to take the desire that uh, was in me for, for this alcohol. And I promised God that if He, if he would take it from me, that I would forever uh, tell the story of how that He had delivered me from it wasn't long after that that I got the wonderful opportunity to go into a rehabilitation program in northern Kentucky called the Grateful Life Center. When I went to this place, uh, I was taught many spiritual tools, and I was taught that there was somebody that could help me. Alcoholics Anonymous teaches you that uh, you're to find the God of your own understanding. I knew that God. I had been taught all about Him from my parents from a very early age, and He had never left me. I had left Him. I'd strayed away from Him. Going to the Grateful Life Center, I once again got back in contact, a conscious contact, with the God of my own understanding. And I admitted to Him my powerlessness and that there was nothing I could do about it. Upon turning my life over to God and working in the recovery program that I had gotten myself into, things started to happen in my life. I learned just how cunning and baffling and powerful that addiction is. And I learned that you can never ever go back and have a drink again. When you are an addict, even if you are in recovery, that addiction is still there. It is only arrested at that time. It's a disease. In 1956, the American Medical Association deemed alcoholism as a disease, and it's just like anything else, cancer or whatever, you've got to treat it. And the way that I treat my alcoholism is by living the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous and living a spiritual life. And that's allowed me to be sober at this time about 20 months. My life today is much better than it once was. Is my life perfect? No, it's not. I still become overwhelmed. I have issues in my life that I deal with daily. But by getting myself into a recovery program, I learned that there are ways that you can deal with, with what's going on in your life. You have a set of spiritual tools that you live by. And as long as I'm living by those spiritual principles and, and doing what that I think God would have me to do, then I can remain sober. I'm very active today in a recovery program. I'm a firm believer that uh, you need to go to meetings. You need to have that support group with other people that you share that common thread of addiction. It helps you uh, by, by hearing other people's stories, what they're going through with, how that they deal with it. Today in my life, uh, every morning when I get up, the first step of Alcoholics Anonymous is on the tip of my tongue. I'm powerless over my addiction, and I can very easily become unmanageable, and I have to let go, and I have to let God. 
the tenth step of Alcoholics Anonymous is very important to me in my life today. Continued to take personal inventory, and when I was wrong, I promptly admitted it. When you're living a spiritual life, sometimes uh, things are, are going to happen, and you, you've got to inventory those things. And when, when you've wronged someone, you, you've got to go back and make it right, because I'm a firm believer that if you're going to live a sober life, that you've got to make all of those wrongs right. Step 12 in Alcoholics Anonymous says that I must carry the message on, and that's what I try to do today. I promised God that if he would take the desire for alcohol from me, that I would forever share my story and give him all the glory. And today I can honestly stay, say that working the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous and having a spiritual uh, connection with the God of my own understanding, it keeps me sober. I'm the man with all I ever wanted All the toys and playing games I am the one who pours your coffee Corner booth each Saturday I am your daughter's favorite teacher I'm the leader of the band I sit behind you in the bleachers I am every man I'm the coach of every winning team Still a loser in my mind I am the soldier in the airborne Facing giants one more time I am the woman shamed and haunted By the cry of unborn life I'm every broken man Nervous child and lonely wife and weary land Is there hope for every man? Is there love that never dies? Is there peace in troubled times? Someone help me understand Is there hope for every man? So there's just so many roads to travel It's hard to tell where they will lead My life is scarred, my dreams unraveled And I'm scared to take the lead If I could find someone to follow Who knows my pain and feels the weight The uncertainty of each tomorrow The guilt and pain of yesterday There is hope for every man A solid place where we can stand In this dry and weary land There is hope for every man There is love that never dies There is peace in troubled times Let us help them understand Jesus is hope for every man A solid place where we can stand In this dry and weary land There is hope for every man There is love that never dies There is peace in troubled times Let us help them understand 
He's the hope for every man. Yeah. Yeah.